Hey everyone, my name's Greg and welcome back to another great video, this time on test case generation. We're gonna be using the power of AI uh, to create test cases for our expression rules quickly, allowing you to adhere to some of the best practices around creating test cases for expression rules. Now don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to see more videos like this one, and let's get started. All right, so the power of AI. It's here, it's around us, and we're seeing it every day with test case uh, generation in this video, uh, but as well as like chatbots, uh, traffic predictions, even like digital art in seconds. So we're seeing AI being a valuable tool uh, for both consumers and developers. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why test case generation is a powerful tool for developers creating expression rules and wanting to make sure that these expression rules adhere to maintainability and have a little bit resiliency against some of the, the data that might flow into the expression rule from production. So let me take you on a tour. Let's explore it using one of these common examples of expression rules you might find in production. All right, so here we can see an email validation expression rule, a pretty common expression rule. You can also find this in docs. We'll link that below here. And it's essentially looking to confirm that the person entered a valid email address. And when we say valid, we're talking about the syntax of that email address. So it was uh, written with um, an at symbol, it includes a dot com or some dot um, edu or dot gov, you know, something of that sort. So it, it, it matches what we expect from an email address. So you can see it right here. Here's the expression. Uh, if we got an or condition, if it doesn't match any of this, it's automatically false. If it does match this, then we can start looking deeper into it making sure that we do have some at symbols in there, making sure that it contains uh, any one of these valid uh, characters, numbers, letters, a dash is fine, a period is fine. So when we create this expression rule, right, again, it's meant to verify that the user has entered a valid email address. And then of course, as expression rules go, we can reuse this anywhere we need to, uh, in our applications. So we've created it, it's great, but we need to validate that it actually works the way we intend it to. So if a user enters a valid email address, we wanna make sure that it responds that it is valid. If they, were, if they enter an invalid email address, then of course we want it to make sure that it responds that it was invalid. So normally what we would be doing here is creating a test case for every single one of these scenarios. So I would click on new test case. Then I would enter in the name of the test case, a uh, valid email address. Uh, then I would enter a value, which represents a valid email address. And then I would see down here, does it pass? Great, does it not pass? Is that expected? Awesome. I'll hit create and maybe create another one and another one and another one, right? To account for every possibility. Now, when we talk about these possibilities, we're talking about null values also. So what if a user is entering an email address, um, but then they hit delete, right? They delete the email address. Are we still validating against that? The possibility where the user did not enter an email address. Does the expression work? So we have lots of different scenarios we wanna test. So instead of us, creating them one by one, let's use the power of AI and Appian AI Copilot to generate these test cases for us. So I'm gonna hit cancel here. And you will notice here we have it, generate test cases. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Let's see what it does. Now you click on it and what it's doing right now is it's looking at your expression. It's looking at any comments you've included in your expression but it's also looking at the rule input name and the rule input data type to determine what values it should create and what test cases it should create for you. 
So here we can see it created eight test cases. Now this might be a little bit different every time you hit generate test cases, as it's using the power of AI to uh, figure out the best uh, test cases to create using the data that you have. But we can see we have a lot of different test cases. They've all passed. And let's explain a little bit about what we're seeing here. So it created a test case, validates single valid email address. It outputs as true. And the value it used was test at example.com. So we know that if we gave it a valid email address, then this expression should output as true, meaning it is a valid email. Great, it works. What do we got next? Validates multiple email addresses. Okay, so can this expression handle validating multiple email addresses at once? Looks like it cannot. So while it does pass in and it does pass, the output is false. So the test is good and it outputs as false. So the way we created the expression rule, we don't want it to support validating multiple email addresses. It's only meant to validate one email address. So if for some reason we give it multiple email addresses, we want it to respond false. So the test passes, the test case says, no, it's not valid because it's only supposed to support one email address. All right, and then we have some more here. Returns false for invalid local part. Well, here we can see the example, test add example, but it's missing the dot com, right? It's missing the rest of that. Now we have an assertion here. So it automatically created that test case and included an assertion. We assert that the test should respond back as false. It does indeed respond back as false. So the test passes. We expect this to fail. It does indeed fail. Good test. And you'll notice we have very similar things here. Returns false for missing TLD. In this case, it's missing that end. It's got the dot, but it's missing the com. We assert that it should return as false. It does indeed return as false. Good test. And so forth and so forth. You'll also notice down here, accounting for multiple at symbols. We assert that it should return as false. It does indeed return as false and of course, handling null inputs. Now I can go ahead and select any and all of these test cases to include into my expression rule. So if I click add test cases, it goes ahead and inserts that as test cases in this expression rule. And I still have the option of going in to each test case that was generated and modifying it, changing it to the way I need it for my rule. And there you have it. We were able to use the power of AI, Appian AI Copilot, to create test cases quickly so that way we can verify the integrity and the resiliency of our expression rules. And that's it. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to see more videos like this one. Hit that bell to be notified, and I'll see you guys in the next one.